Ezra 10. God willing, we'll finish the book of Ezra this evening. We're in Ezra 10, the last chapter of this book. And last time we read about the proclamation, according to verse 7, by Ezra and the elders, that anyone who had taken a strange wife, which was not of Israel, uh, should put her away and separate himself from such people as uh, they move forward with a rebuilt temple and a rebuilt city. And the idea of wholesale divorces and the disappointment which comes with such things um, being commanded by the Lord sounds harsh and cruel to modern listeners. But I want you to go back, before we launch into this, go back to the book of Numbers, chapter 36, the last chapter in the book of Numbers. Numbers 36, and let's read verses 5 through 9. Moses commanded the children of Israel according to the word of the Lord, saying, The tribe of the sons of Joseph hath said well. This is the thing which the Lord doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best, only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from one tribe to tribe, or rather from tribe to tribe, for every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesseth an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself in his own inheritance. And also Deuteronomy 6, just forward a couple of pages from there. Deuteronomy 6. And one verse, or two verses there, verses 24 and 25. Deuteronomy 6, 24 and 25, The Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. The protection of the entire nation and its survival depended on their degree of uh, strict obedience to God's laws as he had given them. It wasn't uh, open for debate or discussion among the people. Let's continue back in Ezra 10. Ezra 10 and verses 15, 16, and 17, first of all. Only Jonathan, the son of Asahel, and Jehaziah, the son of Tivka, uh, Tikva, were employed about this matter, and Meshulam and Shabbatai, the Levite, helped them. And the children of the captivity did so, and Ezra the priest, with certain chief of the fathers, after the house of their fathers, and all of them by their names, were separated, and sat down in the first day of the tenth month to examine the matter, and they made an end with all the men that had taken strange wives by the first day of the first month. There's two men who lead the way in this enterprise, according to verse 15, Jonathan and Jehaziah, along with two Levitical assistants, Mar Shalom and Shabbatai. From the first day of the 10th month until the first day of the first month is approximately our uh, January 1st, to April 1st on our calendar, 90 days, give or take. Um, and it had to have been a very unhappy job. Look down at chapter 10, verse 44, the last verse. All these had taken strange wives, and some of them had wives by whom they had children. Um, those children had been raised in the Jews' own homes maybe anywhere from 
um, a month to 10 or 12 years old by this time. And um, a very sad scene. But I want you to look forward at Luke 14, or as a New Testament correlative, Luke 14, God wants obedience to what he has commanded. And for the Jews, it was their, their righteousness, their standing with God was measured and determined by their degree of obedience to what God had said. Luke 14, and begin there with verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. If you're going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, then you cannot follow all the enticements of the world. If God gives you a, a Christian husband or Christian wife, then you are not to let yourself be led astray with some unsaved uh, man or unsaved woman. Just because you're bored with your life or you're unhappy with your life as it is. And gone, I had a guy I called this morning. I returned two phone calls to guys who had either left me a text or a voicemail. Actually, they both left voicemails <coughs> with uh, problems concerning their uh, um, family. One had a problem concerning his uh, wife's side of the family. He's in Kansas, and her side of the family are all United Methodists, and the United Methodists believe in baptizing babies. Um, and he was against it because he knows that doesn't affect anything spiritually. And, and he wanted someone else's opinion. <clears throat> so I called him and told him, uh, I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. Let it go. You can't change anything. Uh, you and I know that infant baptism doesn't bring about anything. It doesn't affect any salvation. It doesn't bring about any sort of spiritual change. I'll tell you what you, you should do, and that is put the big, biggest smile on your face that you can put on, and you and your wife go and congratulate your in-laws for, for doing something to take an interest in their child's spiritual life, because a lot of people don't uh, regard those things any longer, and then don't say anything more. Leave it right there, because you're going to have to interact with these people or, or, or uh, relate with these people for years to come. And um, one day that little girl is going to come over to your home to spend the night and stay with you, and you'll give it. You'll have a chance to show her what a real Christian family ought to be and ought to be like, and let the Holy Spirit begin to do the rest. I said, that's all you can do. I wish there was more we could do when we see something that's just blatantly uh, non-scriptural. But uh, sometimes you can't. And then the other guy had problems with his, he and his wife, they both say that they're saved, but he's got marriage problems and he's decided they should just get divorced. And maybe she did, wants that too. And so I called him up and I said, you know, God doesn't spend a lot of time telling two Christians, husband and wife, how to conduct their marriage and not to get divorced and what happens when they have... It's assumed in the New Testament that Christians will live up to the very highest standard, that they won't do things like that, just get rid of their husband or their wife uh, at the drop of a hat. Paul talks about the believing husband with an unbelieving wife or a believing wife with an unbelieving husband, uh, 1 Corinthians 7. If the unbeliever wants to depart, uh, let them depart. And he says, a, a brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases. And so God allows that person. To, but for the Christian, it's assumed by God that he or she are going to live up to the very highest standard when it comes to marriage. 
Um, and, and so it's hard to find answers to worldly problems that Christians go through when they shouldn't be having to go through them. Like, and so the, the, the subject of divorce and separation and uh, putting away of your wife or your husband <clears throat> and now if one abandons the other and goes and steps out with someone else that that changes the whole complexion of the, of the matter but uh, but Christians should live by a higher standard than anyone else does in this world but um, let's read through the rest of the chapter tonight verses 18 down through verse 44. A lot of names here, so I hope I pronounced them fairly smoothly. And among the sons of the priests, there were found that had taken strange wives, namely of the sons of Jeshua, the son of Josedek, and his brethren, Messiah, and Eliezer, and Jerob, and Gedaliah. And they gave their hands that they would put away their wives, and being guilty, they offered a ram of the flock for their trespass. And of the sons of Immer, Hanani and Zebediah, and of the sons of Haran, Maasiah and Elijah, and Shemei and Jehiel, and Uzziah, and of the sons of Pasher, Elioenai, uh, Maasiah, Ishmael, Nethaniel, Jozabad, and Elisa, and of the Levites, Jozabad, and Shimei, and Keliah, the same as Kalida, Pethahiah, Judah, and Eliezer, of the singers also, Eliashib, and of the porters, Shalom, and Telem, and Uri, moreover of Israel, of the sons of Parash, Remaiah, and Je Jeziah, and Anakia, and Miamin, and Eleazar, and Malchijah, and Benaiah, and of the sons of Elam, Mathaniah, Zechariah, and Jehiel, and Abdi, and Jeremoth, and Eliah, and of the sons of Zatu, Elioni, Eliashib, Mataniah, and Jeremoth, and Zabad, and Aziza, of the sons also of Be Bibai, Jeho Jehoanan, Hananiah, Zabai, and Athli, and of the sons of Bani, Meshulam, Malak, Adiah, Jashub, and Sheol, and Ramoth, and of the sons of Pehath Moab, Adna, and Kelal, Beniah, <coughs> Maasiah, Mashaniah, Bezaleel, and Binui, and Manasseh, and of the sons of Haram, Eliezer, Yeshijah, uh, Malchiah, Shimei, and Shimeon, Benjamin, Malak, and Shimariah, of the sons of Hashem, Mashanai, Mathatha, Zabad, Eliphalet, Jeremiah, Manasseh, and Shimei, of the sons of Benai, Maadai, Amram, and Uel, Benaiah, Bidiah, and Kela, uh, Beniah, Miramoth, Eliashib, Mataniah, Matani, and Jashu, and Bani, and Binue, Shimei, and Sholemiah, and Nathan, and Adiah, Machnedabai, Sheshai, Shalei, Azariel, and Sholemiah, Shimariah, Shalom, Amariah, and Joseph, of the sons of Nebo, Jeiel, Mattathiah, Zabad, Zabina, Jadal, and Joel ben Aiah. All these had taken strange wives, and some of them had wives by whom they had children. Thank you very much. Um, there's, there's, there's little that needs to be uh, said about this list because that's what it is, simply a list. Um, however, before we finish the book of Ezra tonight, go to Isaiah, Chapter 11, Isaiah chapter 11, and one verse there, notice what he writes, verse 11, Isaiah 11, 11, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathras, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, 
and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. The book of Ezra and the account of the Jews regathering to their land has some application to the future gathering under, under the Lord Jesus Christ in the millennium. And the story of Israel's regathering continues as we go forward to Nehemiah. Look forward at the next book, Nehemiah chapter 10, three or four pages forward. Nehemiah 10. And notice the appearance of several Old Testament names in Nehemiah 10. There is the mention of the name Jeremiah, verse 2, Obadiah, verse 5, Daniel, verse 6, Hosea, verse 23, um, Micah, just spelled M-I-C-H-A, different spelling, verse 11, um, Ahijah, verse 26, Ahitub, or Ahitub, uh, in chapter 11, verse 11. Is it verse 11? Not verse 11. It's in there somewhere. Forgive me, I didn't get the right, I didn't write the right, right, right verse on. Um, Zadok, which I think is in Verse chapter 11, verse 11. And Jonathan, in chapter 12, verse 14. God lists several names of prominent Old Testament characters who were not those prominent characters that we think of. And also, back in Ezra 10, verse 21, we see the name Elijah show up at verse, at verse 21. Uh, we know that Elijah is going to appear on the earth again. We talked about this on Sunday, Matthew 17, uh, Malachi 4, Revelation 11. And uh, likewise, Moses will appear again, Matthew 17, Mike, uh, Malachi 4, Revelation 11. So, uh, who's to say, but that maybe there will one day be a great reunion of Old Testament characters in connection with either the future tribulation or the future millennium under the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, if, if the book of Ezra gives us any clue or any hint of the uh, the future regathering of Israel. It's a great picture of what's going to happen under the Lord Jesus Christ when the Jew, having been scattered uh, abroad once again. Now, Jews have been going back to Israel for the last 60 years, 70 years. However, that is not the ultimate regathering which will take place when the Lord Jesus comes back. They'll be scattered again under the man of sin, uh, the word Babylon, shows up in the book of Revelation, just like it did before the Jews went back under Ezra. Um, a system of faith and good works will appear once again, Revelation 12, Revelation 14, just like it was in the days of Ezra. And uh, the river Euphrates is mentioned again in the book of Revelation, uh, as it was in the days of David and King Solomon and uh, b b by the way, the river Euphrates off to the east of Israel, that is the boundary of Israel's uh, ultimate inheritance. Uh, David conquered the land all the way over to Euphrates and Solomon ruled over it in his day. And that was part of Israel's inheritance. That little sliver of the state of Israel today is not all that God had promised to the Jew, but uh, be that as it is. So those Old Testament references occur once again in the future. So who's to say that there won't be some great reunion of these Old Testament characters with one another, either in tribulation or in the millennium? Uh, certainly in the millennium, but who knows, but the tribulation uh, maybe as well. I'm going to stop right there and um, 
I think we started this book of Ezra back in February of this year, 2018. This is December, so 10, 11 months, close to it. We've been at it, and we've missed a lot of Wednesday nights because of my schedule. However, I appreciate those of you who have been here week after week and um, faithfully coming and sitting under my expositing, and I pray that it was helpful.